No. Tony, you've never heard our theme song. This is going to be good. What's the theme song? <laughs> <laughs> Who did that? Isn't it um, awesome? <laughs> who, who recorded that? Who did that? Like, what? Who's responsible for that? That is uh, my buddy Dan Billen with Primary Colors Music, and uh, I yeah, I hope it'll get you back. That was beautiful. We uh, hey everybody, um, we are lucky to have the great Tony Rodriguez in the house with us tonight. Uh, he'll be drawing with us. Thank you for being here, Tony. I can see Cassandra's already here um timmy's here i'm here and uh we're going to be drawn tonight but first i'm going to remind you what uh drawing hive is it is a um open drawing night but it's uh it's not everything we do uh it's brought to you by visual arts passage visual arts passage also offers uh mentorships and resources for individuals individuals trying to develop careers in uh painting and illustration so if you have any interest, uh, we do a really good job with it. Um, actually, all all three of these individuals, Cassandra, Tony, uh, Adam just came in. Uh, they all have been part of our education at some point. So uh, check it out. It's a good thing. Uh, tonight's going to be really fun. And this is a perfect night to have Tony here because I <laughs> his, uh, his, uh, Tony makes his own movies. He's really into <laughs> not not because it's bad no 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 no, no not because his movies are bad <laughs> they are they Some are classics bad, but so uh movies we love to hate what an <laughs> intro love, john I love movies it's just it's, <laughs> so anyway uh so here's uh here's what we got up for a reference tonight we got nicholas cage we have uh, uh malali nermi we have zoe uh, D Chanel, and then we have. I have to look at my thing. And uh, Tommy, Tommy was Tommy Wiz was Wizu. Wizu. Uh, Wiz yeah. So, uh, so um, uh, yeah, Wizow. I think that's how I, I I looked up the pronunciation earlier today. Right. That's what the uh, or the pronunciation. Right. Uh, so anyway, this is um, this is our night. Uh, we uh, we do three poses. We do our first two poses are twenty minutes long. And then we do a 40 minute pose. You can do all four. You can work on one all night. You can do whatever you want. But uh, whole, the whole thing is uh, push up and sit up, practice drawing, and uh, it'll be fun conversation. There's plenty here to talk about. Um, I'm going to do a little educational thing down, uh, I don't know, about halfway through the first pose. So um, I'm ready to draw. We, Timmy, do we have the uh, link or the? Um, yeah. So everybody, uh, if this is your first time joining, we love to check out the artwork. So post it to Instagram uh, throughout the night. We still need a hashtag for tonight. So please come up with a hashtag. Keep it on theme and easy to spell short. Somebody in Discord, start typing it up. Uh, we'll come up with it. And uh, okay. if this is your first time joining us, um, I know we got some new people. I know... Um, uh, I know a lot of University of the Arts students are here tonight. Welcome. Uh, sorry you had a rough, had a rough time, but uh, hopefully it doesn't take your mind off it and, and enjoy drawing with us. So um, please share your work. It's the best part of the show. Um, it's my favorite part. It's why we keep doing it. It's, okay. it's so much fun. It's like watching fireworks at the end. It's amazing how many different interpretations we see of the same reference. Oh my gosh, mm -hmm. it's so exciting every time. All right, Tony. Yeah, I feel pretty special to have you here. Sure, thank you, man. <laughs> yeah, it's good. This is great. Uh, how, what have you been up to? What have you been working on? What's been going on? Oh, man, uh, it's a uh, summer now, so I, you know, not not teaching now, which is cool mm -hmm. uh, for a little. You know, it's like really nice to get a to get a break uh, from mm -hmm. all of that. Um, my um, my. Uh, First art book is going to be up for grabs this Saturday, which I'm really excited about. It's been. Oh, wow. This is like, perfect. what's the yeah, link? This, this is something. Well, it's, um, it's going to be available. The publisher is uh, lunchmeetvhs.com. Uh, it's not up there yet, but it'll be up for grabs um, Saturday at noon uh, EST. And so 
Yeah, I, uh, I, I drew um, 31 video stores uh, in October. And um, each day I kept a, a diary component, like a writing component for the day. So folks who read it, you know, it's it's like one part video store stuff, one part me talking about my illustration stuff and one part uh, advice for folks who are like wanting to pursue a month long challenge, who, uh, drawing challenges who maybe haven't done that in the past. And so between that and the sketches and the finals, I've got like a, a book, which I'm pretty amped about. Wow. Yeah. If I if I wanted to pull this up on the internet somewhere so we could like see samples or like I don't know. I'll send you I'll send you a link to what it looks like. I I made like a video ad. <laughs> oh hell it, yeah. It looks like a 19 uh 1990s like infomercial. Oh my gosh, I have to see this. <laughs> yeah, yeah please it, do it. I'll put it in the or can I put it in the chat? Uh if you put it in the chat, I'll I'll play it. I'll Let's I'll play it. it at the uh We'll, we'll we'll find a minute like halfway through. It'd be awesome. Oh, here's the. I might chat. actually just do it now. Yeah. Yeah, it's a there. If you scroll down, I mean, you, there's like samples of the book there, but yeah. If you scroll down, you should be able to see the video. I had a former student of mine uh, glue uh, red, long, sharp nails, and she just sort of like Vanna White's the book. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, this is great. So I'm looking at it now. There. Yeah, the video is um, there. So uh, apparently, Tony, you didn't see our uh, little contract that we sent you about no self promotion, but um, <laughs> no, no, that's okay. I'm so sorry. Sorry. Messing with you, man. Don't oh man, we're kind of, totally kidding, totally kidding, man. We'll, we'll promote everything you do. Yeah, you're you're on the come on, you're on the two hour long drawing show that we asked you to be on for free. Um, I, I, <laughs> genuinely, it's just you know you ask me what's going on. That's what's on my mind right now. That's so. huge. Uh, yeah. This is awesome. I'm, really exci I'm excited about it. I've never done an art book before. And, you know, I was like actually kind of insecure about it because, um, it, uh, you know, I, I always sort of envision an art book as, you know, being more about the art. Yeah. So much of it is the writing. And so I was like pretty insecure about that. And um, I want to reshare it so we can watch the video too. Yeah. So gotta I got to enable, I'm enabling, uh, oh, pull desktop. <laughs> <laughs> Uh oh. <laughs> okay, here we go. This is better. Oh, awesome, Tony. <laughs> Thanks, man. Yeah. Um, a buddy of mine uh, did a lot of the design. Like we collaborated on the design together. He came up with the the VHS logo where you see like the reels of the tape in the title, which I thought came out really great. Um, oh, yeah. these are amazing. Those those ended up being like, you know, the things I was dreading probably the most was like the tiny posters in the windows. Um, a lot of it was very inspired by uh, Julia Rothman's uh, bodegas that she does. Like I've always been a big fan. Really? Of yeah. Like she'll, she'll do these like bodegas and gouache and um, you could see just like, she pays so much attention to detail. Like you'll see like sodas in the windows and like little chip bags and snacks and things like that. And I knew that if I did storefronts that that would be, end up being a lot of like the signage and like posters. So I have like a bunch of really short handy, posters that are just sort of like a secondary component to the book because they're in in the stores wow is this the um is this yeah, it? this yeah. has got to be it. this obvious it says 1666 lunch meat yeah this is definitely yeah, it that's the ad all that's right a, i'm gonna i'm gonna go i'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to play it if it starts to skip a ton somebody say something and i'll stop uh some you know you never know with zoom but i want to check it out video forever Yes, please. <laughs>
Tony. Oh, good, Tony. Is Bravo. amazing. Oh, man. The, the only thing that would have made it better is you didn't tell us that wasn't your hand. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then these are all of them. It. These are amazing. Wow. I want to just cycle through. Is it okay that I'm cycling through these, Tony? Sure, man. Yeah. Okay, hey, cool. Hey, real quickly, just to the room, anybody that, that doesn't know Tony, he is one of the exceptional illustrators in, in the world today. Um, Thank you. Thank I, you. I, one of the so best nice. working. And uh, I very fortunately ran into, well, he kept entering the contests I was running in, two, I think, 2013 and 2014 for like a scholarship at the Academy. And he kept went winning all the contests <laughs> yeah i john and i actually had some like tense conversations where i was like john we're having we're trying to have these contests like drum up like new people you can't give them all to tony <laughs> <laughs> that is yeah it's, and he was I'm, like he's good <laughs> thank you yeah i mean i i looked back on that stuff and it's like it's crazy yeah. how much like the internet has changed since that time you know um it's it, kind of a it, sweeter moment wasn't it yeah, it really, it really was in a lot of ways in terms of like actually connecting with people and, um, yeah. and, uh, so yeah, I mean, that was, I was fortunate enough to be able to try to, you know, do my best to, to get to know y'all during that time. Otherwise I'm not sure. Well, I guess, yeah, you know, you guys now have the drawing hive and stuff and like, you're really like integrated with the, with the social media component. So I, I guess it's not, it wouldn't be like a complete loss, but, um, hey, we would have uh, found you. But I don't know. It it was special. Yeah, these are these are amazing. So, so wait. Okay. So are these? This is a dumb question. These these don't exist still, do they? Some of them do, and I think that's you know that's part of like the 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 you know the book is also like part educational. You know, it's um. I really? mean, regardless of whether or not you care about video stores or you're like nostalgic for them or whatever, um, it's still a. Uh, it's they still are great subject matter. They're colorful. They're really fun to draw. Um, but some of them are, you know, still alive and well, surprisingly, some of the ones I've picked. I mean, I didn't pick them specifically to highlight them because of how great I think they are. There are some of them in there that I do think are really great and exist or and or used to exist, but don't anymore. Yeah. But I, I personally picked the ones that I thought looked the coolest, like that I think would be the most fun to draw because I think that's yeah. like part of like trying to make it through the 31 days of, of a drawing challenge is like, you got to love what you're doing. Like the subject matter has got to be fun. So I didn't, that one's, that one's beautiful. Jeez. Which one are you looking at here? Uh, oh, is it, can you not see it? I just have my, Oh, you're looking at oh, it. Yeah. yeah. Vidiots is still a thing. Like um, Vidiots is still um, uh, a shop in LA and it's a, uh, it's yeah. I haven't visited it personally, but um, it's one of the ones that's still alive and well doing a good job with it wow thank you yeah it worked i mean that was you know october <laughs> it's hard to do these things man i think that uh committing you know to a month-long challenge like drawing challenge is a lot of work for those of you who you've always done that though right i've i mean there have been a couple of times where i did i wasn't able to you know like i mean yeah uh the first one i made it through successfully was one about like cars for movies and stuff i was just thinking i immediately thought of back to you did back to the future i always think yeah. of that one and then what yeah. was fun about that was that was a time where it was like pretty easy on social to like post like i i think you posted like the ghostbusters like car and you were like everybody i'm doing iconic cars for inktober Tell me what I should draw. And then like, like, like tons of people were commenting like their favorite car from pop culture, you know? Yeah. You oh, know? yeah. Whereas so, like today you'd get like one like and like, you know, like. <laughs> you're right, man. You're right. It really, you know, it was, um, it was, it felt almost kind of like the wild west of Instagram, like 2011, yeah. 2012. Mm -hmm. so it, they, like, I remember I did a portrait of um, Caleb McLaughlin from Stranger Things. Um, the character uh, he plays uh, Lucas Sinclair and mm. he shared it on his thing and it's just like the influx of attention that that gets just because of that you know even 10 plus years ago it was so much more than it would be than it would be now um, that's so know. funny also because he was probably like what was he like 11 then oh yeah yeah, yeah so sure. you're so your like success was like on that image was like hinged by like a middle schooler <laughs> who's willing to share art. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. you're right. Like folks were a lot funny. 
<laughs> it is. Yeah. But folks were a lot, I felt like, or at least from my perspective, like what you're saying, like there were a lot more, there was a lot more like what felt like natural interest and participation in things. And sure. it really felt like, you know, people were paying attention to, to that specific, you know, drawing thing and, um, or that, that specific Inktober specifically, but um, it's different now, like you said, right? Like there's less, or it feels like there's less engagement in that. It's just more like, um, well, I don't know. It's so segmented, you know? Um, yeah. And like and with just, the whole like data scraping thing. Oh my God. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Like I, like I, yeah. like AI meta, you know, yeah. it's like, the, I think that it's the concept that I've been seeing about like, AI driven systems, like from what I understand, like they'll analyze things like images from the internet and, or organize it or whatever you want to call it. Like, I guess you could say that they curate, you know, creative content, like our stuff. Uh -huh. And okay. some folks are referring to it as data scraping. Um, and there's some folks I'm seeing who are deleting all of their art from their socials because of it. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but the thing is, is that from what I understand, unless there's something I'm not understanding, is that data scraping is going beyond socials. Like mm -hmm. they're they're taking things from like like Creative Quarterly's online galleries or like American Illustrations online galleries mm -hmm. um, or wherever your stuff happens to be online, right? So um, it doesn't seem as if though it'd be if you're of that mindset of purging all of your stuff from your socials, it seems like you have to go a bit further than that, um, and. I'm not in favor of this, but I'm not feeling as emotional about it because I think the majority of that scraping is to help folks or, you know, different companies accumulate stats on like specific things, like what's trendy. Um, so they can sort of take the temperature of like the art world on the web as it exists on the web, for lack of better words. Yeah. What um, is the, what is the site that is, uh, I always forget it, but it's like, um, I mean, it's basically just like archives of old web page content. Uh, talking about. no yeah i know what you're saying like you could I, and they have that specifically for different so like you could go you can access an older version of facebook or like an right. older version of myspace or something like that which is wild because i was talking with somebody about that i was like you know like facebook like i was like so i the first iteration of it i was my facebook account was created in 2007 it was the first version it was like I mean, because my brother got it when it was allowed for college kids. Yeah, that's so like what it I came out. Saying. It came out like when he was a freshman in college. So he was the youngest user on Facebook day one. Do you remember that year? What was that year for him? I want to say that was like 2005. Yep, I was um, there. I was there too. Yeah. So yeah. that was, um, this is right after it became like not an Ivy League exclusive thing. Yeah, yeah just college. so like they they just like branched out to all colleges which mm -hmm. it used to be, you had to have a .edu to join Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, and then it became a a thing that like kids about to go to college got because it was the quickest way to connect with people you were going to be like roommates with or, or were staying in your same dorm and stuff. Yeah. Um, and I was showing somebody like screenshots of what like Facebook looked like in like 2007. Um, and it was so silly yeah. Now. yeah the wall was like barely there you know yeah like, yeah and now yeah. that that's like that's everything you know it was very yeah like i like doing that just for fun with like other things like mtv's uh website in the late 90s like you can access that like through a a website like you can really look at what the interface used to look like and it's really it's a trip to do it like Rolling Stone magazine, like any of those like web pages, you know, that were uh, mm -hmm. pretty early on with the internet. They're really interesting to look at, but like, um, but with scraping, you know, it's like, I get why people are doing it. And, but I don't think it's as intense as maybe like our communities making it out to be. And I know that probably sounds pretty uh, like I'm not in defense of our stuff or something, but from what I've been seeing, unless there's other opinions on this in here um it just seems like they're trying to collect data to predict like specific things like what might be going out of style or like what might be coming into style like to get kind of like their arms wrapped around the internet a little bit more 
And, you know, I think that illustrators are thinking that the scraping is going to like result in some sort of like AI replicating their own style. Um, and then all of a sudden, like human art directors aren't going to want to work with Sterling anymore because there's like a, a Sterling AI that's less argumentative or whatever. Um, <laughs> I think it's kind of like, it seems like on the surface, like right now in 2024, that seems like kind of like a silly thing. But I do recognize yeah. that it's important to like navigate data scraping ethically, you know, where. Yeah, I think you know, that I think that there's definitely, you know, we always tiptoe around this. I'll be like totally honest with everybody. Like we always are trying to be really careful because it's so hard to have an accurate take on it. And like, I think if you have convictions about technology or the way things are going to go or the decisions people are going to make, you pretty much are never, it's so hard to know. And oh yeah, I mean, so, and so like kind of like hearing as many opinions as possible and then just kind of always assuming that the reality, I mean, giving it some flexibility depending on the opinion you're hearing, but typically, you know, you take the the medium version of the opinion from both sides. It usually lands up kind of somewhere in the middle. Um, I'm definitely not, you know, I mean, I think everybody's upset about the whole like, like, data being totally compromised and taken from them and like without consent or, you know, like that's pretty obvious given that that sucks. Um, but like, like you said, like, like this is what I would be hopeful of the situation. Like a lot of people don't remember this, but like this happened like a, a little over a year ago with zoom. Like they were like, we're going to collect data. We're going to start training a AI model and people blew up. And this is like, this was like right at the cusp of it being like really scary. And, and like some people were scared by it, like rightfully. And then others just didn't know yet, like that it was this like looming kind of monster around the corner. And Zoom got like hit with so much backlash. Like they immediately, within like 48 hours, because I remember I was getting messages from people like, are you guys going to keep using Zoom? And I was like, there's no way they're going to stand by this. Like there's so much backlash. And then with, I think it was like 48 hours, they immediately issued a statement like, um, we are so sorry. <laughs> like, like, and so some of it's just like, oh, it's just people being naive and not understanding how their actions affect others. And I'm talking about companies. I'm talking about people that work, like decision makers at companies. Oh, yeah. And, you know, but then like, I'm not giving anybody the benefit of the doubt either. Like, you know, not like saying like, you know, Instagram, they're really trying. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Like I'm not a dummy. Like they want to make money and like they, yeah. they want to make money at the expense of other people. Like that is like, yeah. that's why they're here. So yeah. anyways, we can um, measure, you, it's, yeah, yeah. They're, not, they're not, they don't have, the, and that's like, that's like the, the, like what you just yeah, said yeah. was the last sort of straw for me where not straw, but just the, the, the moment where I sort of like toss it into the water is the, the notion of like, what is the track record of a lot of these folks? Like these companies right. have never been honest. Like um, they're always at the heart of some sort of controversy. And so, which, which uh, just going back, somebody did me a big favor. It's called the way back machine. That's, that's what, no, I, that's I'm the, sure, that's yeah. yeah. The way back machine. So you go there, it's pretty fun. You can go like check out a website and just like, see how it changed. And you know, it's like really beautiful. Craigslist. It's the same freaking website <laughs> since yes, I was in high school. It's never been. <laughs> <laughs> it's identical. And it's still to this day giving Facebook marketplace a run for its money. <laughs> That's hilarious. That's um, I'm not surprised by that. Yeah. Let me, John, John I'm trying to make sure. Whoops. I'm trying to make sure your, uh, your intro is ready. Oh. I almost forgot. I'm ready. Whenever. All right. Sorry. Hey, before we do that, can I do this, Timmy? I just, I just wanted to say I introduced, uh, I know we have new people in here tonight. I also want to introduce Cassandra. Uh, Cassandra is just a, a monster painter. Um, I, I don't mean she paints monsters. She's really good at it. <laughs> She's a, ga a great gallery painter uh, that kind of focuses on anamorphic animals um, and just exceptional at, at what at what she does and uh so proud to have her be a part of what we're doing she wasn't here 
last week for the first time in a very long time. And I was wondering if we were going to make it through it. Um, so welcome back, Cassandra. But thankfully, Adam showed up last week. Yay. Uh, and, uh, you know, he he kind of picked up the slack and uh, Adam and Dale Stefanos were here last week. Adam is just an amazing illustrator. Um, Adam's got, I don't know the exact number now. I know it's over 30 children's books out, maybe 33 or 34. Just an, a, an amazing children's book illustrator, amazing drawer and painter. You can see by what he's doing right there. Um, and uh, everybody has just magnificent facilitation and it kind of points in different directions uh different parts of the industry but everybody in here is um we make our living with our art and uh it's all about you know everything we do educationally it's all about being a professional um or being working in the industry so thank you both for being here tonight i'm ready now timmy all right tony this is exciting so john does his educational thing and this is <laughs> this is his cue okay Oh, I thought it was his cue. Hold on. Hold on. Too confident. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Always too confident. Oh, come on. I don't know what is. Oh, I know what's happening. Oh, man, you made the ultimate mistake. As I, Timmy made the ultimate say, mistake. Say, hey, watch this <laughs> yeah oh <laughs> nice so so la uh, last week uh in, in our online program edward kinsella uh fantastic illustrator i think everybody on the panel will agree to me that he's one of the greats working um very fortunate that edward was a student of ours at one point and has taught with us for a tremendous amount um he was our guest speaker and he did a wonderful lecture and a great uh, demonstration. And he basically laid it out and said, Toulouse, uh, Toulouse Lautrec is my favorite artist. If I had to pick one artist, he would my, be my go-to. And so I thought it just got in my head. And so I thought, okay, uh, he's one of my favorite artists also too. So I thought uh, I would share Henri Toulouse Lautrec's work tonight. And um some of it just magnificent facilitation. It, it really, really interesting. You know, you read about him. He only lived to be 36 years old. And um, which I, I knew he had health issues and that was part of his um his his physical um his physical being. He had all, um all kinds of um some medical issues that, that they kind of know what it's from. I'm not going to get into it. Uh, but uh, he was he was just four foot eight in stature and mostly because uh, uh, of some childhood injuries that related to his health issues where he broke both of his legs, two different accidents. And he had you know, um, um, debilitating bone disease. And so he's like, you know, uh, waist up, uh, regular, you know, or, you know nor I would say regular, normal um, uh and uh, his his legs were were very very short because of his accident, and um, just I can't tell you what a talent this guy was. Um, his focus on uh, traditional skills with a very unique look at everything that he did. Uh, he was just a massive drawer, and he put a lot of emphasis in his drawing. Um, I just, I just love his work. I love his paintings. Very sensitive, but most of all, he's very unique. Um, he was connected early on. He was connected to, um, uh, shared space next to Degas, uh, became very close to Van Gogh. Um, and, uh, you can you can see him absorbing and you can see him getting closer. Well, this is actually a portrait of Van Gogh. Um, oh, that's awesome. Isn't that killer? Yeah. Just love I it. I haven't seen that one before. And, you know, some of his uh, his lifestyle was interesting. He was kind of a bohemian character. Uh, <laughs> and sometimes, a lot of times at the Moulin Rouge and in brothels and all kinds of fun places. Um, but he... Uh, he, you know, his work, you know, were depictions of these people. 
and he he also was a really marvelous portrait uh, portrait artist. Uh, it had a it had a really unique look to it. Um, he was a great printmaker and lithographer and design illustrator. Designed some of the best posters ever made. Um, but I just absolutely love this stuff. And you can see him being close, you know, the work, you know, not only um, in uh, in subject matter, leaning into Degas, but then going other places, uh, Van Gogh and Bonnard. And, you know, he was uh, certainly, um, uh, certainly very aware and had a huge amount of the post-impressionist influence in Art Nouveau. I don't know if I said it. he was obviously he was French. He was born in France in uh, 1864. And he died of France in 1901. And I'm always just, you know, whether it's him or McDigliani or uh, some of the artists that had a very short lifespan and the body of work that they created. I always loved his color palette, too. Yeah, it's really really interesting trying to get off uh, online, grabbing images online, and you'll see paintings that don't even look like they're the same painting. There's versions of uh, the palettes are so different. Hmm. I believe it. A pretty small. straightforward drawing here. This kind of relates to tonight, right? Doing push-ups and sit-ups, doing a practicing uh, skill set of drawing. I thought you were going to say Nicolas Cage. <laughs> 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 so I saw some Latreks in in New York. Um, the last time I was uh, I was there for the Society of Illustrators, and um, it was in a gallery. I can't remember the name of the gallery. It was a gallery right next door to one of my favorite bookstores. There called Books of Wonder, and um, they just the show was about like old school like psychedelic posters. Um, oh, cool! Was and, it the new gallery? I can't remember what it was called. Except I don't think that bookstore is there. But the the posters that I that we saw at the show were Bill Graham. So like Bill Graham psychedelic posters um, from like the 70s. But the Latrex were like not on display. They were just in a pile. Like, and I, it's, it's <laughs> always so funny how that happens where you're like a, a fan of someone and then you see their stuff like not, it doesn't seem like they're it's being taken care of very well. Oh my gosh. And um and they were just like stacked in a way that you would see like frames stacked at like a thrift store in the bin. Oh my gosh. Oh and my gosh. Just, and I started flipping through them. And um I was just like, wow, this is one of those artists where just seeing it in person is so much better than seeing it. You know, it's like the studio album is great, but when you see them live, it's better. Is that right before they tased you? <laughs> right? No, it was actually right before, right before one of the gallery owners told me a fun fact about him that he wrote and illustrated a cookbook and that he was like really into cooking when he was what wow really yeah well that's now i need the cookbook yeah right yeah the latrec cookbook yeah so <laughs> is that what it's called oh no i just made that title up. well but, i mean uh, it sounds legit to me so i'm gonna believe you <laughs> yeah if you want if you look if you look it up i'm sure you can find it now that's, I a, that's a really interesting painting oh wow that looked like N.C. Wyeth. Yeah, yeah, it really does, and it's what's what's and it, little Andrew Wyeth too. And the, mm -hmm. you know, think about like maybe it, maybe it's just the look of Helga, um, but um, the, I mean, look at the mileage here. You know, the ground he's covering, such expressive drawing, great drawing. Great shape designer. The art Look. of cuisine. Yeah. I, the art I, of cuisine? The art of cuisine by Toulouse Track. Oh wow. I love the I love the history to the one on the left. You know, okay. being able to see the line work and you know the different materials that he's using. Probably, you know, probably done on cardboard or something. I love these. Oh. Wow. So much fun to get, you know, to get an artist in your head and then to like go and just explore, kind of dig in. And I chose like 
60 or 70 pieces. I obviously don't, I'm not showing all of them. And I'm just going through and it's like, which one of these am I going to show? <laughs> I get, you, you get so into it. Uh, he did a, um, uh, later in his career, he did a whole group of pieces from the circus. Killer drawing. Reminds me of like uh, uh, an Alan Cover drawing. It just so, you know, non so well informed and beautifully imperfect yes i love that description much more kind of reining it back in really straightforward for a portrait portrait absolutely every one of them's a winner You know, I'm going to say something I thought about. I thought about this afterwards, just thinking about current news and things that we're seeing. And I'm going to, I got a statement about one of these pieces. Uh, this is some of his print work and his posters. Great illustration. Again, really driven by shape. Great design. Use of type. My two favorite. I love these things. really powerful okay so this piece wow because Whoa. a lot of his paintings he was reacting like in a public space whether it be in a in a dance hall or a, a restaurant in this case it's like he would have been the greatest court artist ever <laughs> no I mean, kidding you, that is this, an excellent it, point i just kept thinking about man he would just been so good at that I love how he, you know, really focused on that waiter. Just that flat, that you know, the 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 silhouette says everything. Well, anyway, that that's it for tonight. I just, you know, if you don't know know his work, and 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 I think a lot of people know would know who he was on a you know casual basis, it just like. You know, all the artists that we bring up. Yeah, people have, you know, you mentioned Van Gogh. Yeah, I know Van Gogh's work. Just d take some time and dig in and look at everything that you can. Bec and look at their development. Look at what, the, what they were doing. You know, uh, different changing medias, different uh, approaches to drawing, you know, reining things in and being, you know, almost academic at times and then really, you know, being very impressionistic. Um and elusive at other times, focusing more on design. It's, it's, it's a great way to look at work. So Timmy, that's all I got. Fantastic. Thank you, John. That's great. Yeah. You, you always end those, like I have to give my thumb up or thumb down. <laughs> no, you don't have to. You just, no, you go, easy. you go, Timmy, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's all I got. <laughs> it feels like the news moment where it's like back to yeah. you Timmy and Timmy yeah yeah back to you Timmy yeah that was great I I enjoyed that one I can't believe yeah. I haven't seen that Van Gogh drawing before yeah I've seen that or one painting, I, I'm not sure what material I've, he's done that I saw a, a few I hadn't seen most of them I have um saw quite a few of them at the Dorsey years ago um but they're always great to see again. They're always great to see, you know, as like Tony, you know, seeing him in live in a gallery, you know, seeing him in person. There's, in a pile. Yeah, in a pile. <laughs> yeah. And that's probably how he would have treated him too. Tony, did you ever go to my dad's studio? You know, I, no, I never did. I saw um, photos of it. You know, I've seen like a bunch of photos of, George uh, playing chess with him in a cute little. <laughs> well, it's like, you know, it's like he, he was so casual. He just had all these, you know, all this work everywhere, you know, so stacked in closets, um, kind of organized, but not tremendously, fairly well taken care of. And, uh, you know, you always think about, well, how would the artist treat this? And he, he, 
the track probably would have just had it laying out like you saw it. <laughs> yeah. Just shuffle through it. Don't steal anything. Oh man, Tony, I'm sorry. Somebody just bought the cookbook and I, I was like, I was hoping they were going to buy your book. And so you just, you sent people all in the wrong direction, man. <laughs> You're competing well, against we, Latrec. We can't buy it yet. <laughs> there's no, there's no competition. Uh, <laughs> in, in Toulouse, man. Um, <laughs> Toulouse, I, uh, you lost, you lose Toulouse. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. And I don't mind it either. That's fine. I saw that it looked like, I mean, I looked it up real quick just a minute ago, but it, it looks like yeah, it might some, be like co-authored by someone, but. Uh, Maurice, jo Marie, Maurice Joyant. Oh, okay. Yeah. The and art of sure, cuisine. And I'm not sure if there's like illustrations in there or if it's just, I can only imagine that he did drawings of like his recipes or whatever. So we have, we have a, a Google assistant in our audience named Xander. And <laughs> He's already done the research. Oh, yeah, right. there, there we go. <laughs> yeah, the more you know. Pretty good. I don't know if that, that could be like a reissue or something, you know, obviously. But well, now I want it. I have um Vincent Price's cookbook that he did with his wife, and that's a fun cookbook. Everybody, uh, we went pretty long in that first one, so please post your work. I I texted everybody, hey, start posting. But if where you should I that, where should I post this? Uh, so we've all posted to Instagram, uh, and use the tags. And Tony, you don't have to if you don't. Uh, we're gonna. I want to check out your work pretty soon. Uh, but please post it to Instagram using hashtag drawing hive, hashtag good bad hive, good bad hive, <laughs> average arts passage. So good, bad, hive. That's the tag for the night. Tony, can we see what you're working on right now? Good, bad, hive, and drawing. I wish to make sure I got this for later. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. Can no, we? No, I, I'd love no, to see what you're working on. Let me see. I'll share my screen real quick. How many folks are? How many folks are in here? And is it just us? We never talk about numbers, Tony. Oh, no, it's not just us. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. No, it's definitely not just us. If you, if you're able to stick around at the end, we're gonna look at everybody's art, and uh, you'll see. You'll it. you'll see a ton of people. Yeah. Can you see my screen? Yes, it looks great. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Brilliant. Tony, yeah, we didn't introduce you, Tony. We got Adam Gustafson in the room. Really amazing oh. children's book illustrator. I'm I'm seeing what. No, I totally know Adam, and I totally know Cassandra too. I don't know how. Maybe it's through y'all. I think, I think so. I think that's when I met you. Yeah. And the, like what, whatever it is you're working on, Adam is rad. Nice. And, and Cassandra, you're working on the Vampira as well. Yeah. You got the, so you got those hands in there. I decided not to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm kind of struggling with right now. Cassandra trying to figure out these crazy hands. It's some, it's some shapes going on, right? Yeah. Yeah. Tony, so you're kind of new to the crew. The audience, they do 20, 20, like 40 in terms of time mm -hmm. on images. The panelists pretty much do whatever they want. <laughs> oh, okay. I don't know how They're, long I've been. I started yeah. before I even start, got in here. Yeah, well, you're like in the John camp then. <laughs> <laughs> see, see, that that's my contract. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm not coming back if I have to draw all four. <laughs> Tony, I could not get over your Andy Warhol piece. It was amazing. Thank you. I, it blew I tried, me away. But, I mean, I try so hard on all that stuff. It's not like a, it doesn't come easy. Thank you. I appreciate it. But, well, it gives me comfort knowing it doesn't come easy because it was genius. <laughs> wow. That's really, thank you. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I tried really hard on that. I mean, that that piece and, and a lot of other pieces were, um, in the spring we're we're very took a long time to do <laughs> took a long time to do um and uh i think it was i mean my i had a i'd lost a nephew um in the and uh it was a pretty intense and um i think that when you lose somebody you you uh there are some things that come with that that are somewhat predictable 
-hmm. and there are some things that come with that that are that you couldn't have seen coming from a mile away and one of the things that happened was that I, you know you start to think like oh you know like we don't have that much time and time is limited and all this and and um previously prior to that i had always had this sort of mentality of like okay yeah like i'm drawing nirvana for the la times this will be one of the many many nirvanas that i get to draw in my life and um but after after the kiddo went um it was it was like well what it, what is it what would it look like if i could only draw madonna one more time you know or like uh, mm. draw andy warhol one more time um what would i want it to look like or like how long would i spend on it if this was like the last you know paul mccartney that i get to do yeah um, and then so like several several of the pieces i worked on were worked on under that sort of like regimen where it was like what what does it look like and it's interesting because then all of a sudden you start to see like all this sky and clouds and ser serenity that isn't normally in my stuff because it was, it was almost like a illustrator's last meal hypothetical last meal yeah and, um, wow. and so those the, the andy was a part of that like that grouping of pieces in the spring that i did that were done under that sort of that blanket of of headspace you know i mean i'm sorry for that headspace um that you you went into for that but it was also really beautiful the way that you were able to handle the things that you were thinking about and what you did with that oh thanks yeah um yeah it's a it's weird like i would never have predicted that would be something that happened um you know just how and everybody deals with things differently i suppose yeah well yeah. and even yourself if like going through something another time you may react completely different like you just never know what happens yeah oh, processing yeah. tony what what were you just doing there that was kind Sometimes of when i when i reach a point with a sketch like i'll just like mess with it <laughs> so yeah. like, sometimes like what i'll do now is i'll duplicate her a few times because i like the way she came out um but I don't you know did if... you did something similar to that uh with james dean last time you were in here do you remember that yeah it's a it's kind of seek not secretly but like loosely inspired by sterling's compression drawings or i think he calls them compression drawings um and they it's just like he will sit down and watch an episode of like game of thrones or something and sort of just like draw over top of his drawings um so it's a little bit like that but sometimes i'll do it you know, do this to find interesting things that could happen and, and to sort of take a break from drawing a little bit and move things around. Tony, is there a reason, uh, cause I feel like most people use Photoshop in night mode, like the layout. Yeah. Is there a reason you like to work with the light mode? I, it's not actually the light mode. It's the mid, it's the mid. <laughs> it's oh, like okay. There's a few different versions of it. Um, yeah, I think that when I when I first started using it, I don't think night mode was invented. I think the yeah. the the dark mode of Photoshop was um, something. Yeah, was, dark mode. Yeah, right. Or so I don't even know if I'm calling it the right thing, but no, I, think I think dark that, mode's the proper term. Yeah, I think it was implemented later on, and so I think I got used to working with a lighter setting. But the 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 mid, you know, kind of like grayed out. Uh, situation was nicer to me I guess like a yeah. half between the two because I remember there was a time I didn't know how to change that and so I remember being on computers just all this blackness and it was just like hard for me to find things and I I do know that the human eye is like like people think that like night mode or dark mode is less stressful on your eye like at night but I do know that like white text on a black background strains your eye immensely i've read about oh, that yeah. quite a bit For yeah sure. it's like it's like a cardinal sin of like web design i've heard um, this too yeah and i, I don't even feel like yeah. i need to hear that to know it it's, it seems pretty obvious yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> i like to talk about obvious things <laughs> <laughs> i like to say obvious things like they're profound thoughts um <laughs> no <laughs> wow this is so cool <laughs> This is so interesting. This is this is partly how I went about um, doing a couple of experimental pieces um, a few years ago. Um, this piece, uh, lighthouse piece, and a Joker piece, was uh, just layering line over line and finding these different ways of uh, 
appreciating the thing. But so I, never, I don't think I Raymond do Raymond Benny and I have talked about this because I work in Adobe Premiere and After Effects a lot. Yeah, he spends a lot of time, you know, obviously in Photoshop. Do you understand the nuances and the, like the technical differences between blending modes? Um, or do you just or do you just like feel it out? I have. I think that over the years it was it was just a lot of feeling it. Yeah. Um, but now I can kind of predict what a blending mode is going to do to something depending on like the contrast of the thing or the color of the thing. Uh -huh. Um, but it sometimes will still sort of like come as a, as a surprise, which is something I really like about those modes. Like, um, uh -huh. um, and I like that. I like the, the, the bit of unpredict is that I think that so oftentimes, and some of my students are like this too, where they're in pursuit of every knowing everything. <laughs> and so, and I think that's cool. You know, I just, I don't know if I want to know everything all the time. And, um, they're, they're, I find that I'm oftentimes, when I'm not drawing for a client, trying to reconnect with sort of like the fifth grade version of myself that didn't know everything. And <laughs> there was a lot of like, uh, there was a lot of play that happened uh, a lot longer. I, I'm, I'm chasing that feeling of just trying to play a little bit more um, and not think too much. Um, and there's some things that can still provide that excitability and blending modes is one of those things uh, where it's like yeah I, I can kind of predict what's going to happen but it's also exciting to not know fully right but i know that's you know, you know it's really cool tony yeah There's adam's here tonight he's being really quiet and he knows everything <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to say much when you know everything i guess yeah <laughs> sometimes i think he does <laughs> I'm a know-it-all. It's not quite the same thing. No, you're not. No, know-it-alls drive me crazy, and you're not that. <laughs> <laughs> but he's a really random know-it-all. Yeah, he is. yeah. <laughs> his uh, his uh, topic of knowledge is quite interesting. All right, I I I stake out my turf. <laughs> very Sandra, is this the new webcam? Yes. How's it look? Hell yeah! Awesome. Oh yeah. my gosh. <laughs> Sandra, you work on cardboard. Shocking. <laughs> and it's recyclable. Yeah. <laughs> I'm joking. I never knew that. I couldn't tell in the old camera. <laughs> no, uh, this is this is actually really exciting. Uh this week I got um artwork from Randy Schweitzer sent me some artwork. Oh, that's awesome. It's, it's like a special right. treat. Just a special out of the blue, send me some artwork, send me a drawing of my dad. I'm going to see if I can go grab it, but um, you'll appreciate it, Cassandra. Um, here, I, I, I'm i going to surprise everybody. You're going to love it, though. Oh, I know I will, because I love Randy's stuff. You but guys I, talk amongst yourself for a second. I'll be right back. I, I had an amazing drawing hype moment uh, very recently at a local art show. Uh, there was this gentleman named George who's who's been coming to these things. I saw him at, a, at an art walk a couple weeks ago, and then he came to this uh, exhibition, local exhibition I was in. And uh, we were doing this artist Q&A, and it came up that George already knew who I was because he's been drawing with us. That's so awesome. And uh, so so I did. I saw him at the another art opening a couple weeks later, so we got a picture together. I'll I'll text you guys. Oh, cool! Oh, that's so great. I stepped away. Who was it that you that you got a picture with? Uh, oh. George, one of our out in the wild drawers who lives two towns from me, and uh, he ran into me at a couple different art events. I was like, well, of course I know who Adam Gustafson is. Like we draw together on Thursdays. I know you from the Drawing Hive panel. He just said hi on Discord. Oh, hey George! Oh, nice. Is this right. one of George's? I like that is affiliated with the Academy. Like, which George is this? No, this is different George. But everybody, Randy Schweitzer sent me. <gasps> oh, so great! That's oh. wonderful. Oh yeah, I saw that the other day. That's great. Uh, yeah, I love that. If my dad was Jacques, but Cassandra, this is what you're gonna love. 
Is it pizza? Yeah. I know that Randy popped, like paints on pizza boxes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I was so excited about it. And then uh, the other one, I'd show you the other one he sent, but it's uh, went to go get a frame. So um, really nice. Thank you, Randy. Thanks to all the Switzers. We I had the chance to talk with Randy. And we talked about um, his looming threat, which is his son, Nate. Oh, his stuff's so good. <laughs> his son is a very talented artist too. I've Sounds been family. Seeing, I've been seeing that dude's stuff on Instagram and yeah, really. I, I've seen Randy's. But stuff. you're seeing it in the wild, like you don't know who he is, but you're seeing it. No, I'm pretty sure I know who Nate is because of yeah. maybe Randy. Yeah. And I'm, I'm I, no, yeah, I'm I'm pretty sure I'm following that dude, and it's pretty wild. Really like, good. I saw, I saw Frank Sinatra piece of his. It feels very. I mean, a lot of his stuff feels very Sterling-y, like a little, like it comes from that world a little bit. Um, it's really strong, powerful stuff. Like he did like a Catcher in the Rye thing, I think. Yeah. Um, he was definitely a student, but um, he's kind of taken it at his own place. And and I'm proud of him for doing that. Yeah, it's really, the, the stuff's really strong. Um, and you could just tell it's like very healthy in a healthy mm -hmm. place. Well, Timmy, that's a really well and fine, but I ha I, I have a drawing, a, uh, the, uh, uh, an image, a portrait of my father done by Tony. <laughs> no <laughs> way. Dude, I can't believe you still have that. I, I still have it. I do too. It's upstairs. Thank you. Yeah, I, I like the way that one came out. It was, man, that very was nice. a long time ago. I have the digital version of it. I, John, I have a drawing of your dad by Tony too, actually, but it's a print. <laughs> yeah, I'm collect I'm just collecting photos of people's dads at this point. <laughs> yeah, that's what Timmy and I focus on. <laughs> We're pretty dad centric, <laughs> which on the topic of dads, Tony, you'll love this. Of an upcoming episode, I think it's going to be. Um, end of june or early july we're gonna have um a a comedian on who i've gotten to know um his name's gary veter you can guess oh, how i got that you trailer got... was so good oh cool so you can guess how i got to know him salicus uh of course always bridges the gap um but gary veter uh is currently producing a podcast produced by will ferrell and it is about finding his con artist dad he has not been in touch with for a very long time. And oh. his dad was a con artist in many things, but most notably when Gary was like, I think he was like nine or 10 would go to Madison square garden. He grew up in New York city and would, would, uh, he, his dad would pose as a photographer and would present Gary, the 10 year old as a, um, as a child reporter for Sports Illustrated magazine. <laughs> that just kills me. And they would get into every like playoff games, every like playoff games, like the Chicago Bulls playoffs, the most important game, maybe of the past, like, 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 like just like golden era sports. He would get in and then not just like get into the, the arena, but then would be like, okay, well, you know, we're with Sports Illustrated, so my kid needs to interview Michael Jordan. And, That's the thing that blew me away. <laughs> and there are photos of Gary when he's like 10 interviewing Michael Jordan and mean? like and like Scottie Pippen and like every player that won the Stanley Cup that year. And like, um, you know, it's obviously uh, the story is not all fun and games. It's, you know, a, a story of an estra estranged relationship, but it's rather... Um, it's very like Royal Tenenbaum-y or like just absurd. Right. Yeah, that's actually a great descriptor. That's how I kind of think of it too. It, it's like hard. It doesn't, it's it's stranger than fiction. So Gary, um, I've been texting with him. It's going to be on the show. So I can't uh, believe what you just said. Like everything isn't is not absurd. I, have, yeah. I feel like Cassandra, is that you hearing that for the first time as well, or are you already aware of this? Oh, he I sent me the trailer earlier today, and I watched oh, okay. it, and I was like blown away because, like, they show like 
um, video footage of like photos and you literally see this little kid with Michael Jordan and you hear the grown-up version of him talking. You're like, that is the same guy. Like it's, it's crazy. I you just you, like, why is no one reacting to this right now? Like, this is, that's yeah, like I'm used to see Tony. I'm used to getting crickets. <laughs> okay. Cause like, that's the craziest. <laughs> That's a it's crazy thing talking. I've heard. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm half Scandinavian, so like all the expression is behind my face. If you were in the room, you still wouldn't know I was reacting. Oh, okay, <laughs> yeah, because that is wild. Like yeah. I would have told my wife about that later. That's like, that's really epic. Like I want to see this. I, I am to... like I am looking forward to the podcast. Has yeah. it already come out? Uh, I know that one episode is out. Obviously, I'm gonna I'm gonna eat it up pretty fast because it. I I've seen Gary perform live a couple times and he's like one of my favorite comedians. He's as dry as it gets. Um, <laughs> but, but it's, it's a sweet story. I think it's a, I think it's a bittersweet story. I don't, I don't really know the details of it. I've heard it. I heard it before I heard about it before it was going to be a podcast. Um, and I'm sure that there was many, I, I can only imagine I'm excited to kind of learn more, but I would imagine that there were many different ways to tell that story. And I actually think that a podcast is the best way to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Hearing I think everybody's it, voices through it mm -hmm. all. Yeah. I think it's the most honest way to do it, but we'll, you know, we don't, we don't have to like get into it too much because it's going to be a full episode and I'm, I'm actually really excited about it. Um, you know, we don't know how much time we'll get with Gary because I know he's promoting all that. But yeah, somebody just, yeah, not somebody, Xander posted the photo of Gary. I love that you always say somebody and it's Xander every time. Well, I just don't want to mess someone's name. Just, somebody named Xander. Just somebody it. named Xander. Yeah. <laughs> they just posted it to Discord. It's too good. I got to share it. But yeah, it's, it's just like peak 90s bowl cut. It's so good. <laughs> peak 90s bowl cut amazing yeah wow. and this is like the tip of the iceberg he's like they went to like something like 50 games <laughs> he talks about like going in like the uh the locker room after games and interviewing players and yeah but that is too much yeah it really is um everybody we should move on to our third and final pose the um hashtags tonight are Hashtag drawing hive hashtag or at visual arts passage. And the most important one hashtag good, bad hive, all one word, good, bad hive. Uh, please post your work. We're going to check it out at the end of the night. Um, if this is your first time joining us, uh, it's my favorite part of the show. Like very simple. It's my favorite part. So um, please post it. It's that's where the community starts. Just know your page has to be public for it to be seen. Just it to does have to be public. You're right. Thank you for saying that. Do I know anybody in here? Hi, everybody. <laughs> you checking out the attendees? Every once in a while, I go through the attendees and I see a name and I'm like, they should be on the panel. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hi, Sally. Hi, Randy. Hi, Giselle. Yeah. Which on the <laughs> on the topic of Salakius, he Matt Salakius uh texted me the amazing photographer in New York. If you're a regular listener, you know who he is because he's been on the show a couple of times. Um and I always nerd out because he hangs out and has photographed everybody I admire. Um but uh this happened when I first met him. I really wanted to work. I wanted to edit something for him so badly. And I was like, Cassandra, you remember this chapter of my life uh -huh. where I would text you screenshots of our text exchange. Yes. And I'd be like, <laughs> I'd be like, what the hell does this mean? Because yeah. <laughs> I'd, I'd like ask say a question. Like, he would like it. Not yeah, like, he, yeah, I would ask a question. He would just like give it a thumbs up or something. And I'd be like, am I being needy? What do I say? <laughs> Whatever. And uh, this is about like a year ago. I was in California with my wife and we were there for the summer uh, staying in our camper. And and he texts me. He's like, hey, how soon can you be in New York for like a week? And I was like, it's happening. I'm going to be, I'm 
I'm re- and and like that week, I think like Sam Morrell was doing a photo shoot that or not a photo shoot. Uh, uh, there were there were all these comics filming comedy specials, and it was also just for laughs in LA. And so I thought like, or not just for laughs, whatever. Netflix is a joke. And so I was like, something big is happening, and I I have to be there. And I was like, I'll be there as soon as you need me. And he goes, perfect. We're going on vacation, and I need somebody to watch my dog. <laughs> No. <laughs> and i was like oh yeah i can't do that man i'm so sorry <laughs> i'm so sorry i i thought this was like a job opportunity <laughs> it was such a like a, a like a devastating blow to my ego and uh and i get what he was asking he was asking because he knows i go to new york a lot and he was like free rent for like a week that's sick that's awesome like who would not want that um but uh, he hit me up a couple of weeks ago and was like, you want free rent in New York? And I was like, yes, I'll, I will go to New York to watch your dog. So I've become a professional dog sitter in New York for, I'm going to be, I'm going to be, you know what we'll do? We'll do a drawing hive episode where I show everybody his, his house, just like <laughs> completely invade, his, <laughs> just completely invade his privacy. <laughs> open his medicine cabinet. Yeah. Me- oh, oh, oh yeah. 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 But I've always thought, yeah, put a trail cam in your medicine cabinet. That'd be, that's a great <laughs> experiment. <laughs> see which see which house guests cross the line. Um, <laughs> no, so, so that's that's on the docket for me. Do you guys have any big projects? Or how about this? Have you ever had somebody that you wanted to work with that bad? I feel like Rolling galleries. Stone. Yes. Rolling Stone. Really. Yeah, like I would have, I would have flown out if they needed, if they wanted me to, like I would have flown out for like a meeting, even if it was like not a promised thing. And you would have said like, "Well, I'm, no, I'm gonna be there anyway." <laughs> yeah, I would go. I would go. Like, yeah. yeah. Even if they were like, "We're not gonna pay for your flight or anything," I would still go. Mm-hmm. That was that was that probably the biggest dream client of mine for a long time. What was it like when it happened? It was wild. It was like, I remember going on, I was on vacation um, back in South Florida. And I remember I almost didn't bring my computer or my tablet with me. And, oh and uh, my wife was like, you should probably pack it. Cause you've been getting, you've been doing like New Yorker stuff. And um, you don't know if Chris is going to shoot you an email. And I was like, Oh, you're right. And so I packed it, went back down. I, I, at some point during the trip, I was like passed out. Like I was like beach tired. I was so tired. And I woke up and I got the, I looked at my text and it was my agent with just all these exclamation points saying Rolling Stone. And um, I was like, I don't believe she's because, and what was funny about that is that she actually had just pranked me um, about a job. Oh, no. so, oh, that's awful. Right? <laughs> that's but, What a cruel thing to do. <laughs> But, but, you know, I like, I'm, I'm fine with that. Like we're, yeah. we're buddies, you know, like I like that we have that relationship, but she had just pranked me. So a little bit of me was thinking that she was just messing with me again. I was like, man, she's so cruel and great. Um, but it was a real, it was a real thing. And I'd gotten the the email and I was like, wow, it's dream come true. That's amazing yeah. and hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> that feels like the way it would come in after a prank while on vacation. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Once it, once it, uh, when did it, was there a moment where you got comfortable with it or was it, were you anxious the whole time? Um, or are are you an anxious person at all? Really? I'm a pretty anxious person, but not for art. Like I can be, I can get like pretty, um, just like claustrophobic in a big gallery with lots of people and it's like hot and all that. Like I can, I can immediately be be uncomfortable with that, but with art, not really, not so much. I think the the most I was ever nervous is the first time the New Yorker came calling. I think that was, I mean, that was my first big, like full pager in the New Yorker. And so I was nervous. I remember sending them like 16 different finals. Um, Like, but you couldn't like, you couldn't discern one from the other. They all looked the same. It was like, to me, there was like, no, this one's different because of this. (laughs) And uh, I just remember like the art director saying like, all right, we'll go with eight. They all look the same. And, um, but no, that, I think that was the the most nerve wracking thing. But by the time Rolling Stone came, it was like, oh, okay, you want to 
you want Dan Auerbach from the Black Keys? Like, let's do this. And um, I was just mostly just excited to do it. Like, I wasn't feeling like, you know, anxious or like in a bad way. But it was good. And I, and I like working with yeah. them. I mean, they're very, very, I mean, because it, it also just hits all the marks, you know, like I like music so much and mm -hmm. drawing about music is, is is my favorite thing to do as, as well as like drawing about movies. I, like hypothetically, let's say you've got a job from Rolling Stone coming your way. Like, how does it start? Like you, like, what does the first minute look like? Like how you learn about it mm -hmm. to, to the final delivery? It'll either be like my agent gets the email first um, and then she'll text me um, or I'll get an email and they don't CC my agent. And so then I do that. She likes to be in and I like that she's in on the process. And then, you know, they're like, unlike other mags, like they're pretty professional. Like they, I don't have to like ask a lot of questions. Like some magazines will say, you know, like we need a this and this by this date. But they won't say like dimensions. They won't give me a story. You know, so I end up having to ask like the art director a lot of questions. But um, Rolling Stone's pretty like they'll be like, "This is the van. These are the references we want you to use, and um, this is the the brief of the of the story. The whole story may or may not be like fully written um, at that point." And um, the, they're like, "These are the dimensions. This is the bleed. And are you available?" And and um, and then I either my agent will try to negotiate um, for a higher fee or she won't because she'll be happy with the fee and and she'll ask me if I'm happy with the fee and um, and then we move. Truth is you would have done it for free. Right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that's I think that's the coolest part of this job. Yeah. Uh, and, um, and so yeah, just get straight into reading the brief and doodling and listening to the music of whoever it is and doodling and then you know back and forth and then I do a lot of like little thumbnails that I don't ever show them and because they don't ever want to see thumbnails or like I've never been asked for thumbnails in editorial they just want to see like sketches um like more refined sketches and uh and then I'll do like when I feel like okay this is this is gonna work this way and I've hammered out all of the little like okay this could be nice you know design I'll move into the the likeness and just start thinking about the likenesses and um, and once I feel like I have the likenesses down, then I incorporate the concept around that uh, and then work up a sketch that I would show to a client, not like a sketch that I would understand, but a sketch that they should understand just by looking at it. Um, and then I'll send them that, and um, they'll get back to me with notes or they'll say like, "Great, go ahead and." Um, and it's sort of like off to the races. And then I start, you know, doing the final like primary contour lines. And um, and then sometimes I may like if there's like if there's something that they're not sure of, they're like, oh, we're not sure about like how this is going to look in the end. You know, um, I, I'll work up like a little cube or like a little square of like what the galactic component of it, you know, might be if there is some sort of like space in it. Like I remember that first one I did, there was like some space like universe oriented elements. So I'll do like a little sample, like square of like, this is how this is going to look. And then once they're cool with that, then I'll spend, you know, 15 plus hours on the whole thing. And, um, and, uh, and I may send them like the primary contour stuff um, while I'm working on it, just to make sure they're still cool with it. Um, and then move into full color. And then I'll send them the, the final file. Normally it's like a TIFF or a JPEG, whatever they're requesting. And um, they'll say thank you, and 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 I say it's, <laughs> it's been great to work with you. I'm always a big fan of, of working with you. Like, let me know when you want to work together again. And then it'll go usually to print within the week. And then some, they're always really nice to send me copies, which is nice because I like to keep the copies. And that's uh, cool. Yeah, and then within thirty days you get paid, and it's very nice. Um, yeah. I just, I think I romanticized them a lot, a lot when I was in college. Like that was always like a very typical illustration assignment, you know? Oh my where, God. Almost famous. Right. Or are you talking about the, the movie? Yeah. I mean, I'm just, I, you just, it's easy to romanticize the idea of like working with Rolling Stone. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah. So that's, that's basically the, that's basically the process. I mean, and, and that, 
is like across the board, really. I mean, in my experience with editorial stuff. Um, and then it varies depending on like what kind of art director you get. Like there's some art directors that are very like collaborative and they like to be that way. And there's some art directors that are like, no, this is what I want you to do. And I don't want to see any extra ideas from you. <laughs> I just want you to do it like this. And that's also fine, you know, like get to draw pictures. It's it's a grateful for that. What's the turnaround time on the the job typically? It, it depends on whether or not it's a weekly or a monthly. Like um, I worked with Humanities Magazine, which is a monthly mag, uh, to draw Frederick Douglass for their cover. And uh, it was, um, I had like five weeks to do that thing. And I finished it in like a few days because that's what I'm typically accustomed to doing. And then I just had all this time to noodle around on it, which was kind of annoying to me. So <laughs> I, I, like if I have like too much time to work on something, I feel like I'll just mess it up. And I right. really, I like that sort of like quick editorial thing where it's like, you're done. That's it. Like this is, it's, it's over now. You can't do anything else to it. So like a humanities uh, will be like a monthly I think Texas Monthly, I mean, that's in the name. So you'll get more time to work with monthlies depending on whether you're working on the cover or, the, or an interior. Um, but usually like New Yorker, Washington Post, like that stuff's going to print like pretty fast. So they need like, and that's something where I always try to like be on the side of the art director. I try, I used to be more complainy about it. Um, but just knowing like what an art director has to deal with has made me a lot more sympathetic to like, their communication, you know, skills, mm. you know, they're having to commission the photography for the, for the thing. They're having to commission the design for the thing. Um, if it's not already something that's being done in house, they're having to commission all the illustration for the thing, all the writers. And, um, so it's a, you know, and I know that that position tends to vary uh, on what their responsibility is. Um, so it's a, it's one of those things where I've, I've learned to be a little bit more forgiving of the art director because of that, but typically two to three days, uh, for weeklies and then longer for covers and monthlies um, is has been my experience. Have have any of you ever had an opportunity that it just broke your heart, but you had to say no to it? Um, oh, yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. I'm trying to think um, if I've ever said no. <laughs> <laughs> Adam, have you ever said no? <laughs> I don't think I've ever said no. Yeah. Really? I don't think I, I've once, but I can't remember what it was. Because eventually you get to a crossroads where you can only do one thing, right? Or no. I mean. um, Well, you know, I, when you're working in books too, like everything is like, everything is going to be like 20 paintings and they're going to take all, you know, anywhere from like six months to a year. So, and at some point you're going to send them off and people are going to sit on them for a month or two. And then you'll be like, anyone who calls me right now and asks if I'm busy, I'm going to say no. <laughs> I'm not busy. I'll take whatever it is. Tony, what 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 have you had to? It was it was um, Hasbro. Um, it was it was going to be my second ad gig, and my agent was pretty upset with me about it. Um, I, it was just at a time where. I just had so much on my plate. You know, the kiddo was like transitioning in a toddler. Oh yeah, that's a tough time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and and I just was also like, this is during the pandemic and like I started getting a lot of anxiety. Um, that was the first panic attack I ever had was around that time. And um, it was actually days before the Hasbro thing happened. And um, I think maybe my agent was just having trouble like wrapping her head around. Mm. I was trying to like confess to her. Um, and she was just like really <laughs> out because it was a lot of money that I said no to. Um, so that, that one's more like, I regret it because I know she was upset about it, but mm -hmm. you know, I know friends who are like, no, you did the right thing. And, you know, looking out for your own mental health and all this. And, and I get that too, you know, but that's definitely one that I regret saying no to, um, especially now since I feel fine, you know, like I don't, I don't feel like that anymore. Yeah, that's easy. That's like an easy, like, like, uh, well, I feel fine now. Why, why can't you just, why couldn't I have just felt fine then? Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> that would have been nice. <laughs> what about you? Did you ever have anything like that where you were like, oh, I can't do this right now? I, I, um, I, I don't know, only a couple of times and, and 
for the most part. I, 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 I fall more into Adam's camp where it's like, I can't say no to it. Not so much that this, I just don't say no to, to opportunities I'm really excited about. I just can't. Yeah. I, I get too much, um, like there's FOMO of like, there's something happening and you feel like you missed out. My biggest enemy is feeling like I knew deep down that I should have done something and I chose not to do it. Like yeah. That's, that, that haunts me. And so, and I know it haunts me way more than when I do the dumb thing and, and like I take a gamble and it's like, wow, shouldn't have done that. That was stupid. That, that never like keeps me up at night as much as the, that opportunity came, it was presented to me on a platter and I could have done it, but I behaved this, like I acted this way or I handled it this way. Yeah. 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 I mean, I think that that's a, I can totally relate because I feel like I used to be that way. Like I used to take everything. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was also, I mean, I was taking everything because I needed the money, you know, like it was very, you know, if I wanted to get myself out of substitute teaching, I needed to do editorials like all the time. And I was always in a very, in a mega state of gratitude for that. And, um, but it was, it also came at an, at an expense and that I just like, even if I was burnt out, I would still keep going, you know? So I think for me saying no to Hasbro was, you know, like a kind of a victory in a sense in that I could, I, I was, it was a sign that I could start to slow down a little bit, you know, and not. Yeah, I also don't have kids, like, well, no, I totally get what you're talking about because I, I got offered like a bunch of shows with some really great galleries and I just got too much that I had to start saying no. And then I started to worry that they wouldn't invite me back in because I was saying no to a few in a row, yeah. but I was just so busy. I couldn't keep up. Yeah, yeah that was, a, that was the same. I mean, I had to have several sit down, you know, several times where my wife and and some friends had to sit me down to say, like, you can't keep living like this. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, and I uh, just, and I just yeah. imagine you surrounded by like, like retro, like arcade games <laughs> and like nineties, like, like you're like in the midst of your blockbuster, blockbuster project. And they're like, Tony, you have to stop. Yeah. It's a, <laughs> it was kind of, it's kind of like that, but, but more, more just, uh, you know, uh, yeah. cause I had problems I, and maybe some people ha have this too, where it's hard to stop drawing, you know, it's hard mm -hmm. to stop doing it. And I used to have that, you know, and it was affecting my, my relationships with people as I know that sounds kind of corny to say, but it really was. And I think that I've gotten a lot better at that where I can just sort of turn it off where it's like, no, I'm not drawing right now. I'm not answering any emails right now. Um, I used to just be always like a seven 11, like always on, always open. Um, and, uh, and that, I think that was good for a while, right? Like it helped me to get into the, into the industry, you know, like it helped me it, it become whatever it is I am now and get the, and get these opportunities to be that, you know, intense about it. Um, but I think that it became kind of addicting, you know, to just, yeah. be, okay, this is what I'm going to do. And um, so I think that I've, yeah. yeah. So the Hasbro thing was one of those, like one of the many things um, that was sort of like a mile marker of like, okay, like I can do this. Like I can say no, and even if it is going to disappoint some people and, um, and I'm comfortable with that and I can go on a hike now and not like worry. Right. About it. That took a lot of practice for me to do, to be able to do that, like successfully to where, I wasn't like on a beach thinking about like, Oh, right. I could be working now. You know, um, I was, I was talking with a friend about this recently because we were talking about some of the most successful creatives that we've met or that we work with or that we know. And there's like kind of a duality to it that is like nauseatingly ironic where it's like, you can't get to that level without like just grinding yourself into an oblivion often. Yeah. But to maintain the longevity once you get there you have to make this rapid shift to like not destroy yourself what you just said was perfect <laughs> that was yes. Exactly, yes it's like that is exactly it to me like that's people don't want to stop climbing though like it, and you have and sometimes people just have to say like hey you did the mountain like you're done here yeah you can, you can be done here um and 
Yeah, and to hear that from people is a, is a really nice first step to to slowing down a little bit. And 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 I think you know having the kid was a huge, yeah, a huge thing. You know, um, like I remember kids in in undergrad saying things like, "Oh, I'm not going to have family. I'm not going to have kids. I'm not going to do anything like that." And and it makes sense, like why people would make that decision. You know, especially if they're wanting to pursue a creative career. Um, but yeah it's a but yeah you said it perfectly man like that's a uh, i mean i'm regurgitating a lot of stuff but like you you seem like a person that has always managed to maintain kind of a a um like not you know like i don't know like a a childlike curiosity it, i mean this as a positive like a very uh, that sounds that does that sound demeaning that i mean i mean it no, no, sound no. Like, i think that's such an important okay. skill to have okay and and one of the things i want to ask is is because i you when i first met you tony you did not have a kid and, no, I didn't, I didn't. but but you still had i was still like oh this is like a this is like a 20 28 30 year old like kid right yeah, and, yeah. <laughs> no, I, I mean and, that's a compliment. So, that's so, a compliment. so when you had a kid, did it, did it, uh, did it make you like super, uh, adult kid, or did it change the way you are? Like, did it change you at all, or did did, did that was that just has that always just been in you? You know what I mean? It it changed it. I I see what you're saying. This is good. <laughs> it's um it changed me and that I'm like, I don't know if it changed me. I think it just brought out a little bit more of a conservative side that I didn't realize I had. Um, uh, in terms of Tucker of Carlson. Not, not like that. <laughs> not no, like I'm that. just kidding. I'm just I kidding. Was, <laughs> but yeah. like, you know, like a, this is, oh, like, wow. Like this is how I discipline, you know, like this. Yeah. Is, oh my gosh. This, yeah. There's this. Oh whole, yeah. Cause you're like Mr. Yeah. Fun. Exactly. Yeah. Like the, the, this is, you know, and, and a lot of it happens very sort of like organically where you're like, oh, wow, like this is, this is my voice as a parent. I didn't realize I was, yeah. and I hadn't had an opportunity to cultivate that voice until I had the kiddo. And um, so there's a lot, like, I'm really like pretty firm with him, but, but I'm also total goofball as well. You know, like, with yeah. him, like we go to arcades together and, and we <laughs> will have like, oh, you'd be fun. such a fun dad. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> I mean, I try, I try to be as present with him as possible. And, but no, uh, yeah, I'm a total goofball. Like I've, I've always been my wife too. Like we're just kind of, we're in a band, you know what I mean? Like we play music together. And, um, and so it's a, we try to, to have those things, you know, like, um, and, and I think part of it is like, you know, to keep, you know, to make sure that our friendship, you know, stays good and stays strong and healthy and, um, and, and to stay human, like beyond, you know, the, the idea that there's this thing that I do, you know, um, illustration stuff. Um, uh -huh. But, but I don't know. I mean, I think parenting changes you in a lot of ways. Um, I think for me, it was more like he helped me figure out what my voice was going to be as a parent. Wow. Really? And, but I don't know if it, like, if it changed me more so than it just brought out, awakened a part of me that I didn't mm -hmm. know was there. Um but he he becomes this other reason to put the pen down you know what i mean like for a lot of better words um and uh and it's it's been a constant thing that i've been working on for a long time now like um like when to set it aside you know like um mm -hmm. to not say yes to everything um yeah. so that i can like enjoy my family and stuff you know it's um that that's kind of been what my perspective has been is like mm -hmm. it's been a little bit difficult to do that but i'd say like even before he was born, like 2018, I started seeing a difference in terms of like, okay, I'm going to take the week off. I'm going to be more present and like, you know, right. And, and, and be calmer and not feel like it has to be all overcome by art all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, but definitely post him being born. I mean, that just, it, it it changed it helped quite a bit you know it's like okay here's this other thing that i'm also obsessed with is him so did you feel like like having a kid we, we talk with um talk with a lot of people that like make the leap and have a kid like probably i'm probably gonna have a kid eventually like and you start i'm, I'm speaking as a person that doesn't have a kid you think about like the um 
And I'm speaking as a naive person who does not have a kid. I want that to be like very clear. Um, <laughs> uh, you think about like life and, and like your time and your goals. And I always think like, well, like, Oh my gosh, like I already feel pressure to like accomplish this thing or get this done. And like, God, like that's going to be, Oh my God, the mountain that of like, of tasks and responsibilities and stress and anxieties. And like, then when I, I've met so many people over the past year, cause I think I've, I ask people who have kids about this that start businesses or are kind of doing their own thing. And they'll be like, yeah, basically everything was failing. Then I had a kid and it like put me into high gear. <laughs> uh, there, is there, do you is feel that? Level. Do, do, do you guys feel that? Like, I yeah. remember seeing that. I think I said, I might have told the story last week, actually. It was like, you know, when I talked to like a cousin and her husband were thinking about having kids at a wedding years ago. And, and they were sort of like, oh, I don't know, but I, you know, I'm really working on my business now and I want to be able to focus on that and grow that. Yeah. And, and all I could think was like, well, you know, uh, nothing made me focus on making my business succeed quite like having kids. Yeah. Like, now now i like there was no there's no buffer then i like i whatever yeah. i was doing now i had to work yeah there's a lot and, less call call of duty in that schedule for me well um, you know actually <laughs> I, the one time i said no to a job i didn't have kids yet and it was like oh, really? it was gonna be a lot of work and the pay wasn't great and i went yeah i don't and it was like a work for a higher contract it was all the you know red lights that you go no nah, i'm not gonna take work like that yeah. And then, you know, the next time a job like that came in after I had kids, yeah, I was working on it because <laughs> I needed it. Right. Yeah, I think that, I think it was a little different for me. I mean, because I had, I had been teaching at SCAD and so like illustration didn't have to happen at that point anymore um, in order to keep it going. Mm -hmm. I'm not exactly sure like how I would have been able to do this without um, without the teaching component, um, when I did, um, you know, like doing editorial stuff and living in Tampa without the kid was a lot easier, I think. Um, but it, you know, I, I don't know. I think that for me, it was a little, it was a little different in that, like, I don't know if it kicked me into gear in terms of like trying to find gigs mm -hmm. more so than it just kicked me into gear of like, okay, like, embrace the fact that you're wanting to get this tenure position and you can get this tenure position like theoretically before he's in first grade um and he'll be able to go to like you know these state schools around here um in any anywhere in tennessee mm -hmm. like basically for free and so it, be, it became more of like you know secure the tenure track position um yeah. with like a big primary that was what kicked that into gear um so any kind of like moments that i have where i feel like i need to quit teaching which happens sometimes yeah um, i just remind myself like i'm doing this for the kid and doing it so i can save up uh some money in case he ever wants to do something or um start a business or something so i can give him something like in addition to the illu stuff um i i do like the idea that it makes you realize like every like as i'm getting older maybe people could have tapped into this before they're like 35, but it took me until 35 to start to like acknowledge, like this is bigger than you. <laughs> oh yeah, man. I mean, to each their own, you know, to each their yeah. own. It's a, it's a Marvel. Uh, it really just feels like, Oh, this is, this is why I'm alive. Like this yeah. is why I'm here in the first place is to have this kid. Um, but I know that everybody has their own opinion on that and that's fine. But there to me no other greater purpose yeah than to have a kid and 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 uh engage with that part of your life um that otherwise wouldn't be there i guess if you chose not to do it but i know that you know there's plenty of people who are very happy without kids and that's obviously fine yeah um, oh yeah no i don't want, i also oh, gosh that's the last thing i want to do is like yeah 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 you know, like imply that i'm i mean i'm I'm like the the poster boy of like you know I always think of idiocracy. <laughs> Idiot, oh, that's a great idiocracy one. opening scene. It <laughs> nails it on the head perfectly. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm like, and I'm like the the first the the dummy that's like we're gonna wait. <laughs> but uh, it's it's great. But yeah, 
it's um it's a uh, i don't know i honestly i can't even remember where we where we were going with this <laughs> oh i mean i just i just find it interesting that like what motivates people and it's like so counterintuitive you know sometimes you think you know the most stressful week of your life you're like well how could i possibly get anything done oh anymore? yeah that's the, right. mo yeah. the most difficult thing that you encounter it, i mean it's not always this way but yeah you know, I, sometimes it is is that it's those are the moments that you look back on and you're like gosh i you know yeah I'm true. Like thankful that that happened i mean i'm not saying there are true tragedies but yeah true but, the truth yeah. about it to me is like, now that you've reminded me of where this came from um, <clears throat> is that, you know, and I've probably talked to you about this before, but like there was like a, a summer where a man and I were trying to cook our own food um, mm -hmm. for every meal. And it's just the, the most nightmarish thing you can do. Um, we're going to make breakfast, lunch, and dinner for ourselves. And I remember the first time we did it, it was the worst. Like the first week was like, how does anybody do this? Like, how does anybody have time to do this to actually prepare meals for themselves? It was just a nightmare. Mm -hmm. And I remember her and I just struggling so hard to make this pad thai, like as a team. Uh, it took like, I don't know, like two hours to do. It took forever. And then I remember like a year later cooking that same pad thai in like 40 minutes by myself. And it was just, it became no, cooking became no more complicated or strenuous or stressful than doing the laundry. Yeah. And so I think that the, I don't know what anybody else's experience is with kids, but that's kind of been that way with us. It's like, yeah, you, you get overwhelmed. It's like, what are we doing? We have this kid. I don't know what I'm, I'm already having issues, you know, keeping up with my own life and, and existing yeah. as, a, as an independent. But I think that what it eventually becomes is kind of like that story I just mentioned is like, oh yeah, this is him and this is what he needs to do. And yeah, we are probably getting up a little bit earlier than some other people and, you know, yeah. having the uh, parent teacher conferences and um, having to make sure that he's being, you know, not just like in front of the TV all day and all this, right. but all of that stuff just becomes very, you know, second, second nature. Um, and, uh, and I think the difference between Ben and like the complexity of a pad Thai is that he will continually go through different phases, right? And so it's like, all right, now he's in this phase where we're potty training. Now he's in this phase where he's being rebellious. And now he's in this phase where he doesn't want to eat anything. And um, and so you just end up adapting to those different phases. But mm -hmm. it's not as, I would say like from my perspective, it's not as intense as like, oh no, I'm already drowning financially and I'm already, you know, drowning in stress that you know, how, how could I possibly bring a kid in the world? It, um, it becomes something that, you know, fixates itself to you and you fixate yourself to it. And, but that's my own, that's my own uh, interpretation of that. I can't speak for anybody else. No, I, I agree with what you're saying. I, I honestly didn't become a gallery artist until after uh, I had kids. I like worked in the back of a grocery store for Trader Joe's doing murals for them. So that I broke into the gallery, like world in the midst of having twin babies and just finding time to paint and parent and realizing like there's a way to like at first it was really hard and then we figured out a way to make it all work by working together and like now I don't they're all tied together it, it's what makes it interesting and fun yeah oh yeah and um and it makes you stronger too like it's like you you're lifting weights you know like it, and then you lift more the next week and then more the next week. And it's uh, a, yeah. that's, that's something that's very uh, gratifying, uh, you know, about the whole thing for me too, is, is that you're, you're getting this like constant education in empathizing and sympathizing and being there for another human being like all the time. And um, I think it's just, it's made me a better person. It's made me more, it's made me better in the classroom. You know, it's made me a lot more patient. Yeah. Uh, and I used to be. Um, How about your time management skills? My time management skills are amazing now. Oh, yeah. I think that they all, I think mine drastic shift from like 2010 to 2011. Like that's when I really like put myself in gear where I was just like, I need to grow up. <laughs> I just need, <laughs> I need to stop. I need to stop hanging out with people. Like I remember I used to hang out with people aimlessly. Like I don't know if anyone still does that, but I used to just, <laughs> hang out with you know what i mean do like, people do that still yeah like 
<laughs> I used to never have like an exit. Like there was never like, oh no, I'll be there for a couple hours. It was always just like, yeah, we're hanging out. You want to go to Gainesville? Let's go float down the river. Yeah. When will we be back? Hey, Tony, guess what? What? That's what all of us, all of us that don't have kids, that's what we all do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's, and that's, that's something like when I hang out with folks who don't have kids, like for yeah. however long, like you realize you're like, oh, wow. Like they, they're yeah. in this. I texted my buddy, Dan, the other day, he's got, uh, he's got a kid. He's got two kids now. And I was like, you want to go see Furiosa at 1 PM? He was like, are you insane? <laughs> We got a plan for that, man. We got to do that. <laughs> yeah. He was like, maybe like a month from now. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. Like, yeah, and I feel like I'm booking out, yeah. a cruise. Exactly. Like, yeah. I, I feel like I'm booking a cruise to go see a movie with him. Dude, I'm it's... like, we got to be sure we're available. <laughs> How long does it go? Like there's a, com <laughs> a comedian named uh, Nate Bargazzi. Oh, Nate's oh yeah. Best. Yeah. He does something really funny like that where he's like, you know, in your twenties, it's like, where, where do you want to go? Like, let's go somewhere. Like, well, I'll do yeah. whatever. Like, he's like, in your thirties, it's like, can I drive separate? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. How long, yeah. It's how like, long, sure. But can I drive? <laughs> I need to drive. Yeah. How long is it going to last for? Are they going <laughs> to yeah. have food there? You know? Um, but no, that's all very true. You know, but a lot of that stuff, a lot of those freedoms that I guess, you know, people would, would, eat, you know, equate that to you know like we have those great memories too and sometimes we find ourselves in those situations where we're super spontaneous kids up past his bedtime like i host drawing nights here and like ben will like a bunch of people come over and ben will be up till like 12 1 in the morning playing tabletop and drawing and oh wow uh, those are really like you know fun nights you know where you're we like the cool parent like with measure you're like a exactly. measured a measured cool parent i saw you you posted your your, your boy and like a friend and it was like, I was like, I guarantee a sleepover at Tony Rodriguez's house is like the coolest house to have the sleepover <laughs> at for sure. It's like we, a house. Your house is definitely I like just looking at the wall behind you. It's designed. It's like sleepover core. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> it's totally. We, we try to make it like we try to have. I mean, we turned our whole garage into like a studio of just yeah. like, let's hang out and let's play and let's and let's, uh you know um and it, we probably would have it this way even if we didn't have been you know um and uh and that's totally yeah. cool with us you know i just think that we knew like for years that we wanted to have kids and um yeah. we were just waiting for the right time man you know like i i didn't i did not want to bring a kid in the world when we were living with like nine other people um, oh that's pretty good choice and, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, we, we try to we try to have a good time with him and we yeah. try to, you know expose them to a lot of different things yeah. i everybody i want to say if you're slower with the tech you might want to start posting now or pretty soon we're gonna head over to instagram in about seven minutes so um you gotta you gotta watch the clock on your own please post it to instagram with hashtag drawing hive hashtag good bad hive good bad hive and average lord's passage we're gonna check it out in uh about seven minutes. So please post your work. It's my Real favorite quick, can everybody, uh, there has been some questions about what arts. Yeah. Thanks for, like. thanks for grabbing those questions. Yeah. Go um, ahead. Cassandra. Can, uh, like Adam, how do, how about we kick off with you? What you're using? All right. I am using, uh, these Krita color sticks in, uh, black and sanguine, uh, in a little lead holder and then white gouache on top of that. Creative oh, color sticks. What is that? Um, it's it's basically like a like a well, wood free little pencil. Oh, cool. This one is like I really like these. They're they're like a black graphite, but they're like they're really like as black as charcoal, but very matte instead of shiny like a pencil. But they they smear as much as a pencil, not like charcoal. Nice. Wow. I love the effect. So it means. If you have to scan in sketches, uh, your life goes quicker because your <laughs> scanner doesn't suddenly reflect off of it. Okay, that's a great explanation too. That's really important. John, what are you using? Um, <clears throat> I drew this with a Neocolor crayon. Yeah, and supposed to be so good. 
It's supposed to move with water. Mm -hmm. So this was the one I did last week. I love that one. And I hit it with water and completely deteriorated it and lifted it out. This didn't move at all. <laughs> so oh my, it looks really good drawing. though. It's just really straightforward, kind of boring drawing. But you got her face really good. Mm -hmm. I've been dumping water on it. And it just doesn't move around. Which is so weird. The some crayons do really well, and I thought, well, the black one's going to move more than anything. Uh, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> so live and learn. But that's imagine that with this treatment. Uh, so <laughs> there you go. Wow, Adam, that's amazing. Yeah, Adam, it looks so good. Oh man, yeah. it's so good, Adam. Starting to overwork it. So <laughs> so good, so good. Not bad though. Not Man, I didn't know Toulouse Lautrec was here tonight. Jeez. <laughs> right? Tony, so, what are you I'm working with? I'm so angry about this. I'm I'm working. Yeah, can you show us where you're at, Tony? Yeah, I'm gonna see. see. Share screen. Man, I made this woman terrifying. Um whoa. That's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> That's fun, Tony. <laughs> I'm using uh, Kyle's Ultimate Charcoal Pencil. Um, Kyle Webster? Yeah, yeah, Kyle's brushes, yeah. Um, I, uh, I like using his, um, his charcoal packs. Like his charcoal packs in a, in a small setting, like they, it feels more like graphite than the graphite ones do. I don't know if that's on purpose, but normally when I want like a graphite thing, I, I'll use one of uh, Kyle's uh, charcoal stuff. That's cool. Looks so good. Thank you. Love it. Some good stuff tonight. The 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 artwork for tonight is a lot better than the movies from tonight. <laughs> well, for setting the bar high. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love the So Bad They're Good movies. It's like one of my yeah. favorite. I think we should do another week of it because it's just, there's so many. There's so many. Yeah, there's so many, but then there's also, Tony, you can weigh in on this for sure. There were so many that I wanted to recommend that I was like, but they're not really bad. Like, they're, for yeah. instance, okay, so for instance, this was on my list because I, I gave John a list of like the, the movies and then John picked four of the ones he wanted. But like, uh, like on the list was like like face off but like face off is great that's a good movie yeah but is it but is it good because it's bad that's <laughs> that's like such a tough question because yeah like i don't know it also falls into is it nostalgic good or is it good good i mean it's good good <laughs> <laughs> no, I know, but, I, I know but that. is it good good because it's bad <laughs> when i think when um uh, when i want to annoy my husband i like Rub yeah. my hand down his face and say space off. And he's always just like, ah, oh, stop. Yeah. Star <laughs> Starship Troopers. Um The Rock. Ooh, what Con about Con what Air. about the Ewok movie? The Ewok movie for sure. But I remember watching that when I was a kid and being like, This is a masterpiece. Hmm. This there's is one, there's one yeah. um that's really bad. Um, but I love it. And it's called the FP. And it was introduced to me by this cool video store owner in Atlanta. Yeah. Uh, and it's, if I remember correctly, it's like a post-apocalyptic society where like different gangs battle for supremacy by playing a weird version of DDR. And, <laughs> and they all like insult each other by calling each other like different sandwich names, like bologna sandwich. And like, yeah. it's just amazingly horrible. Now I need to find the FP. The FP. Is the... There is a, there was you a, won't um, thank me. you won't thank me later. There was a, <laughs> uh, there was a New Yorker article about bad movies and like what makes them like bad movies that we enjoy to watch and then bad movies that are like not worth watching. So like a great example of like bad movies that are great to watch, like the Fast and Furious franchise is like, yeah. Like not to the end, like the, some of it at the end has become kind of like, uh, like processed garbage, but like, I want to say like a lot of them are like, this is so bad. It's fantastic. Like who, yeah. who, 
Like I, the kid, like the fact that this guy always has Corona and is obsessed with saying like, we're family. Like, why does he do this? And like, oh, and like every <laughs> yeah, movie, there's somebody silhouetted by a fire explosion behind them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The but, camera. but then they, they, they dig into like, why is Madame Webb? And I don't want to get into like the whole like drama of like Marvel and all that, but they're just like, Madam Web is a bad movie, but it's just bad. Like, why That's is it just bad? I can break that one down for you. No problem. Yeah. But they're like, <laughs> but why is it not enjoyable bad? And like, they kind of, it's a really great like thought piece on it. I, I highly recommend reading it. It's with the New Yorker. I basically, if you do Mad Madam Web, the New Yorker, it's pretty interesting. You know, you can look at, um, look back at like spaghetti Westerns that way too. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I my wife hates them, and yeah. she's like, "Oh, these are awful." And I'm like, "Yeah, but they're so awful, they're good." <laughs> yeah. Should we have a bad bad week where it's just bad? Bad bad. I don't know. I don't know because nobody enjoys bad bad. I would do a spaghetti western week. That would be fun. That'd be oh. fun. Yeah. Really. When the New Yorker writes the an Leone week, bad movie, they still hire the illustration. Yeah, they do. You can still get to illustrate a bad movie. <laughs> so, Adam, you made a great point. Maybe we do a bad, bad week. <laughs> I think bad, bad would be fun. There's bad, a bad. there's a bad, bad one. I haven't seen it, but I've only heard people describe it to me. It yeah. happened in the early 2000s, and it's got Matthew McConaughey in it. It's a movie called Tip Gold. Toes. Oh, there you're going to say go Tip oh, Toes? Have you heard of a movie called Tiptoes? Yeah, that no. one's in, it's it's uh, Kate Beckinsale and Matthew McConaughey. You've and, seen this uh, too, and oh. uh, I believe uh, Dinklage is in it. Yep, yeah. and also and also um, uh, Gary Oldman is in it. Yeah, wow. it's it's, uh, wow. it's it's a wildly distasteful and strange movie that no one should see. And I have no idea how it slipped through the cracks. It was like uh <laughs> it's um like no one should like no one should see it yeah somebody recommended it to me as good bad and i was like no this is bad bad, no, that was bad. <laughs> Definitely bad man. but yeah it's it's like yeah i it takes a lot for me to be all, like this is, realize. it takes it takes a lot for me to be like this is distasteful and i was like this is distasteful like timmy has done 45 seconds to a minute on tiptoes it hasn't explained any of it, which should give you an idea as to how bad. It is. Yeah, I'm not gonna. I'm not. Yeah, Tony, I'll say it right now. I have no interest in giving the synopsis of Tiptoes. Me neither. I'm glad. Yeah, but, that's you know, that's that's so interesting because I just like I always think of Gary Oldman as just you know so nope. on top of it. Nope, he wasn't on top of it that year. Out <laughs> here, he had a bad year. Somehow he thought that was a good idea. <laughs> and John, if, if you even just Google it, image search it, and Xander, don't you dare post an image of this. <laughs> <laughs> you'll know immediately. You'll be like, you, it will shift your opinion of Gary Oldman in a one single moment. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> well, I could say, well, he got smarter. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, everybody makes a mistake. Just no, nobody makes a mistake as big as Gary Oldman did that year. <laughs> Sometimes you got to take a swing, right? Yeah, it was a big swing. It was a big swing. Some awesome artwork tonight. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. Some great stuff. Are you guys ready to check it out? Yeah, sure. Let's do it. This is great. Oh, hi, Mark. That's a quote from the movie. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, nice. Awesome stuff. Fun. Oh, love. Ooh. That's so great. great. That green awesome. is awesome. Yeah. Ah, love it. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Love. <laughs> oh my gosh. Good that's job, Karen. Cool. I just want to remind everybody. Uh, I'm going to stop on Xander. This is a great image to stop on. We're currently enrolling for the summer semester. So if you're considering illustration classes, fine arts classes, um, now is the time to enroll. Uh, classes start July 13th. If you've got questions about them, anything like that, shoot me an email. It's just hello at visualizepassage.com. You'll hear from me. It's not going to be like a bot response or anything. So we can and chat. Right, right now, three of our faculty members are in the room. Yep. Some good people here. Ooh, Sandra, that was awesome. Yeah. Wow. That's Felicity. awesome, Felicity. 
Holy smokes. <laughs> Tony, fast. Tony, did you see that? She's 12. 12. This on Thursdays we draw? Yeah. yeah. The handle? This is the fan account. That is wild. <laughs> And and she's been drawing with us for four years. She yeah. was eight. She used to have to yeah. write. Amazing. I remember when she switched from uh, eight to nine. That was a big deal. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Oh, that's lovely. Look at that. Awesome. Oh, nice. Wow. Great job. Wow. Oh, nice. Oh, I love the strings. Oh, my gosh. That's, that's awesome. So the strings bad. for the saucers. It's yes. so great. <laughs> it's oh it's so bad. It's Ooh, so that's bad. lovely. Look at the hands on that. So good. Love it. Nice, Leslie. Wow. <laughs> Jeff, that's so cool. <laughs> that's <Awesome>. fun. <laughs> nice. Really cool. You good cool shape work. That's a cool hand. <laughs> nice, Nick Cage. <laughs> yeah. Wicker Man. That's awesome. Wahlberg. Great yeah. job. Nice, Nicole. Awesome stuff. Another that's Wahlberg. Cool. Where he's like, hey guys. Ooh, Devin, I love it. Oh, that's great, Devin. I've been looking at um, yeah, I've been that looks familiar. That handle looks familiar, LeBlanc. Oh, Devin, yeah. Yeah, he's very nice. good. Keep your good eye job. on. Good line work. Really good, Karen. Wow. <laughs> Got the likeness. Yeah, nice. Wow. Oh, really? I was going to oh, use Rebecca, one. Oh, Rebecca, that looks good. Nice. <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's so great. Fun. Awesome stuff. Yes. Whoa. Look at that. Oh, that's cool. Wow. That's awesome. Wow. <laughs> I that's like cool. that, Nicole. Good stuff. Oh, oh, that's awesome. That's yeah, awesome. Man. That's a cool Nick Cage. <laughs> We're still going to do a Nick Cage night. Totally. Nice. Ooh, I love that. Great job, Jeff. Oh, wow. Ooh. Awesome. awesome. That's, That's awesome. really cool. <laughs> Sweet. Nice. Oh, Terry, I love it. Oh, nice. Really nice. Ooh, wow. Wow, Kathy. Kathy. Hey Tony, can I? I just want to stop. That's <laughs> oh, awesome, by the way. That's really good. That's Tony, so can great. Can you remind every? Can you remind everybody what's the name of the book, and where can they buy it? The uh, the your the, book, the Le yeah. Czech cookbook. No, your book. <laughs> your come on, dude. Your book. Sell your yeah. book. Yeah, the um, I have uh, my first art book coming out on Saturday at uh noon EST uh, via lunchmeetvhs.com. Um, All right, Xander, grab that link and throw it in the chat. <laughs> yeah, it's um, it's a uh, my first art book, my first writing book, um, and uh, yeah, super proud of the way it came out. And um, yeah. if you like video stores and um, want to know more about how I draw yeah. and um, uh, and yeah, uh, if you love uh love good art and you love art books and you want to support an artist, this is the way to do it. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome stuff. That was good, way. Karen. Oh, Chuck. Nice, that's Chuck. Good. Fantastic. Oh, that's fun that's stuff. Nice, Jen. <laughs> yeah, <wow. laughs> so nice. Xander went off the path. That's uh, great. I was amazed. You thought that hadn't been in there before. Great job. Mm -hmm. Nice. <laughs> oh, I love that. I'm I'm so impressed by all these brave hands tonight. I <laughs> everyone needs to just pat themselves on their back with their own brave hands. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> hands high tonight. I love oh, that's it. Awesome. Ooh, that's so cool. Amazing stuff. That's a good, good job. Good line. Walter. Oh, oh that's wild. <laughs> good stuff. So you, Tony, you were yes. asking how many people draw with us. <laughs> <laughs> that was Quite wonderful. Pretty nice. cool. Isn't happy. It? Happy. Yeah. Oh, Marcy, right. I love that's it. Marcy, dig the green, yeah. Wow. Nice. nice. Really good drawing. That reminds me of Persepolis. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, totally. Yeah. Totally. Mm -hmm. yeah. Really pretty. Great wow. job. <laughs> so fun. Yes. 
<laughs> Peter. Oh yeah. Love it. Oh, whoa, that's crazy. Yes. That's great one, Chuck. Wow. Yes. That um, is so cool. <laughs> nice, Terry. Ooh, great color palette there. <laughs> awesome, Aaron. Oh, that was great. That's so yeah. fun. Love it. Oh, wow. Nice. nice. Love it. <laughs> oh, love it. Just wow. You know, great there. Nice, Arturo. Really nice. <laughs> that's oh, great. that's fun. good stuff. Very nice. Nice to pull. Oh, Fantastic, that's awesome, Sally. Sally. That's that's cool. Cool. Love it. I love that. Oh, whoa. Oh, that's cool. AJ's that's changing cool. it up this week. Yeah. yeah. He, has, he has been recently, the last couple. Yeah, really? Yeah. What's going on, AJ? Everything okay? Oh, no, he's like on a trip. I, I remember oh, seeing really? on Facebook. He's like on a trip right now. So oh, that, I guess it's all about go. ballpoint pen. That's he's exciting. What supposed to be doing exploring. Look at that. Oh, wow. That's good. <laughs> good stuff. Awesome. New person. So Always love it. Fun. Welcome. New person. Thanks. Yeah, thanks and welcome. Good oh, job, Randy. Randy. So good. Amazing. Those Schweitzers. Mm. Yep. That is amazing. We oui, AJ. Woo. On vacation this week, but not from Drawing Hive. That's what he yep. said. <laughs> <laughs> Way uh, to show up. You're yeah. a poster child, AJ. <laughs> All right. This is this is the app. This is the last one, and it's so oh, absurd. That's, <laughs> that's so <laughs> absurd. I'm like sitting here to play awesome. beer pong. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Hey, you everybody. Win. Great yeah. job. It's so great. So bad. It's so good. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Tony. Yes, sir. Adam. Cassandra, thank you so much. Tony, I really come all you want. Please uh, you. join us That's whenever you me. can. Yeah, I appreciate you having me. Thank you so much, guys. Anytime you got a book to sell, come on in. <laughs> and John, and John, I, I know that you, I, John, I know you meant to say Adam too. <laughs> I think I did. I thought I did. I thought I said Cassandra. I, Adam, <laughs> not to be forgotten. I, I thought you did. I don't know. I did say Adam. Listen to the recording. <laughs> we'll play it back. We'll play it back. <laughs> All right. Everybody, that was a great night. Uh, classes Thank start you. July. That was so fun. Yeah, classes yeah, start July 13th. Uh, don't See you, everybody. Thank you, guys. Bye.